All right, Jesse on fire. Let's talk about Darren Till. So a lot of you guys who are my regular viewers know I am a huge Darren Till fan. I love that guy, man. I've never met him. I've never met him in person, but he's a dude like he's he's a guy that is very easy to know through the TV. You know what I mean? Like you watch enough of him. You like you really think he's going to be really different when you meet him in person. Like he he's got his heart on his sleeve. He's a very like he's an open book. Right. And I'm a big fan of, of that guy. And it's been really hard to watch the last couple years, last few years, where his career has been on this slide. And I want to talk today, I think I'm going to title this, What Happened to Darren Till? And I want to talk about it because I have a very unique insight into what I believe is going on with Darren Till. It's hard to watch, dude, because it's one of those things where, you know, it's, you want him to do well. You want him to do well, but the thing that he's struggling with is, is, is a crippling, crippling thing for an athlete, especially an athlete that competes in a one-on-one sport where you're fighting. And when you lose, you get beat up. It's like, it's, it's a, it, I'll get into it. Okay. I will explain this in, in, in fine detail, what I believe is going on with Darren and how he could potentially fix it if he, uh, you know, if he can get, if he can get his mind right. Now, before I do, before every video, I say this to uh, new viewers. If this is your first video, consider it free. But if it's your second video or more, I ask that you subscribe to the channel and you can watch all of my content for free. Okay. I work super hard. I've put up like 1200, 1300 videos on this, on this channel. You can have all of them. You just have to subscribe. It's like the jar at the front. We're raising money for, uh, for children's cancer research. You could take the candy, but you have to put the quarter in the jar. Who takes the candy and doesn't put the quarter in? Only a piece of shit. Don't be that guy. Anyway, um, so also, who, do, who, who compares uh, asking for a subscription to your YouTube channel to raising money for children's cancer? Probably a piece of shit also. So forget I said that, uh, but there is a jar at the front and it's just a free subscribe from you. It doesn't cost anything and it really, really helps the channel. Also, share this in comment and uh, like it if you don't mind. So, uh... And I really do, I would love to hear what you guys think about this. Because this is one of these videos that's like, this is not just like, oh, what happened in the octagon? You know, like, oh, who's going to fight next? This is like, this is like real, real life, real life shit here, you know? So when I used to play fantasy football, trust me, I'm, go, I'm getting to a place that makes sense here. When I used to play fantasy football, I, and I used to take it really seriously before I started a fantasy football company or fantasy sports company, but like... The way I used to always win, and I always won, was I would get a gauge on athletes' mindset. Like they're just, you know, because you like if you get one or two sleeper picks, like one or two sleeper picks that end up having a breakout year, that's how you'll win. It's as simple as that, dude. Like you'll win, you know. If you get a couple guys who end up being top five, top ten receivers, and you get them in like the sixth round, fifth round, that is, that's it. You'll win. And the way I used to do that is I would gauge guy's mindset. I would put myself in their position. I would really feel like think about and feel who the guy is and then what their situation was, etc. Like the, and the example I always give is like when the first year that Terrell Owens went to the Bengals, which I think was like 2009, I remember what, like looking at him and I was watching him in interviews and I was like, he's got a chip on his shoulder. Everyone thinks he's done. He's going to blow up this year. I got him in like the sixth round and he was like the fifth highest producing wide receiver, but it was like, I, I did it getting into his brain, you know? And with Darren Till, I understand Darren Till in terms of his mental when it comes to fights. And this is what it is, okay? So there are some people, especially in the fight game, that, that come into this thing with the confidence, where the confidence is derived from the belief that they are destined for this, right? Like this is their destiny, that they're going to do X, Y, Z, right? That like they're on a magical, they're on a magical journey, you know, now they're doing all the work. It's not like they're like short, you know, it's not like they're like not, not working. It's, they don't think it's just going to come, whatever they're, they're doing the work, but in their heart, they believe that they are going to be the champion, that they're going to be this, they're going to be that. And this is all a formality. Like it's all happening. They've been visualizing this and it's all happening now, right? It's all, it's all unfolding. I'm in my first title fight. It's all unfolding. And that belief system is very very powerful and simultaneously extremely dangerous for a fighter. And the reason for that is because 
belief is at the core of all performance. That is the core of any performance in anything that you do is your, your confidence and belief. The second you start questioning yourself, things fall apart. You know, when you play golf, the be- like I tell people when I like, I mean, I don't really play very much golf anymore because all I do is jujitsu, but like, uh, I tell them, I'm like, forget about your swing. Look at the ball, look at where you want to hit it. And when you're swinging, do not think about anything except visualize the exact shot that you want to hit. It's like magic. And then you just like golf is fucking hard, dude. And every time, if you actually do that, if you just visualize the exact shot you want to hit the entire time that you're swinging, you will hit that shot. It's it, it, like, it doesn't even make any sense. I mean, but it does because your mindset is at the center of everything and how well you can focus it, et cetera. So like when you're on that destiny thing where it feels like this is a foregone conclusion, you already know the outcome of the fight. So, you know, you get banged a little bit, you're fine. You already know you're still going to win. It's, you know, like you're, you got hit or you're on the, you're on your back. Okay. I'll battle through this because I already knew that. I already know that I'm going to win this fight because I'm destined to win this fight. I'm destined to be the champion. I'm destined to whatever. Right. And so in a lot of cases, you end up doing exactly that. You fight through tremendous adversity because your belief system states that it must be the outcome. And I remember when Darren Till, when, like before he fought Tyron Woodley uh, in his title shot, I remember watching his interview and he was like, he, and, and I, again, I'm good at this dude. He believed with every bit of himself that he was not only going to be champion, that he was going to remain undefeated. He was undefeated at that point. And that like, he was never going to lose and that he was going to continue to win and he was going to be the champion, right? Like he believed that. And I'm not saying it as a negative. I'm saying to, to understand what I'm going to kind of try to illustrate here, you have to understand he believed this 100% that he was on the destiny train to get to whatever it was going to be undefeated title. No one was ever going to, he's going to be the greatest of all time, right? He loses to Tyron, you know, he loses to Tyron Woodley and you know, he shook up dude. Like he shook up, but you know, you lose one fight like that. That's one of those things where you can still hold on to your belief system. That's at the core of your entire career is the, at the core is this belief that you're destined here. Right. And you could tell yourself like, I'm going to be a better fighter now from this. Like I'm going to look back because it's all about the story that you can tell yourself, right? I'm going to be a better fighter because of this. If I wouldn't have taken this loss, I wouldn't have blah, blah, blah. But because this is going to be the defining moment of my career, I'm going to come, I'm going to, you know, come up from the ashes and I'm going to fix this and fix that. And then I'm going to run through and I'll, and I'll beat Tyron Woodley the next time we fight and yada, 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 right? Then you go out and you fight someone that you're absolutely supposed to beat in Masvidal at the time. The, I mean, and I always come back to this just because I think people forget Masvidal in that fight was being fed to Till the same way that Gordon was fighting Patty Pimlet last night. That was Masvidal in that fight. You know, it was a it was considered to be a winnable fight for Darren Till to come back and build his star again. That's what that fight was. And then, you know, Masvidal just went and starched him and then three piece in the soda, you know, uh, uh, Leon Edwards and then, you know, head head death knockout to Ben Askren and boom, he's stolen all the hype from everyone. Then he fights Nate Diaz, superstar, you know, that's such a crazy story, but nonetheless, that's what, that's what that fight was supposed to be. Masvidal was being fed to Till so Till could win. And then he gets starched, starched. Okay. That's the first time he's ever been knocked out and he's knocked out cold. So now now you got a big chink in your armor in terms of your belief system. You're like, I just lost two in a row and I just got knocked unconscious in, in, in the O2 arena. Masvidal knocked me out. He hadn't even fought in two years. What the fuck? You know? Because it's not like you're just question. It's like, like if your belief in yourself is built around grit and skill, and I'm not saying that, 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 Darren and people like this do not work hard. They work just as hard as other people many, most of the time or plenty or sometimes. Right. But if you're, if your belief in yourself is built around grit and skill building, you go in there confident because you're like, no one could have worked harder than me. Right. 
Like it's impossible that someone worked harder than me. That's not possible. The weaknesses that I had, I trained those ass. I did nothing but train those. How is he going to beat me? My skills are too good. Like my skills are too strong now. I had a little, I had a weakness over here. I fixed it. I did the work and I fixed it. That's confidence built out of grit, right? Like built out of that's, that is proper confidence for a fighter, right? That is the exact confidence that you want to have. The destiny thing, the destiny thing is something else. It's something, like I said, it can be extremely powerful, but once it's broken, once it's broken, then you have this whole other thing where, you know, that's, I mean, you go up to 185, it's like, oh, okay, you know, like, so this is where I was supposed to be. I was supposed to be at 185. And he, and listen, he won a great fight against Gastelum in that first 85. You know, it was a really close fight. But, I mean, Till is exceptional at not getting hit, dude. Exceptional at not getting hit on his feet. I mean, aside from the Masvidal one and, you know, the shot from, from Woodley. But he is very good at not getting hit, dude. You know? And he did a great job in that fight against Gastelum. He's done a great job in a lot of them. And, you know, but at the same time, once, once you start losing and what, like, this is the thing. Once you get to a point where there's no story you can tell yourself that your belief that got you here was true, your entire belief system is shattered. Like you, like I'm destined for this was the magic carpet that was carrying you through your career. And once you get to a point, which till is at where you can't tell yourself that story anymore. Cause it's, it's just, it's objectively not true. Right. I'm not saying that he couldn't come back and do well. I'm not even saying that he couldn't come back and win the title. I think he tore his ACL last night. So not ideal, but you're, you can't get like, you almost have to, you don't just have to rebuild your skills. You have to rebuild your entire fucking mindset. That destiny shit is gone for you. You have to build your skill set around, or you have to build your mindset around skill building and around grit and about not giving a fuck, like let go of that. Like you have to let go of the destiny thing. That has to fucking go away, dude. You can't even have that in the back of your head anymore. That shit's gone. You're, you're going to do as well as you prepare yourself to do. That's how you're going to do. And you're going to go one fight at a time. Don't think about your losses. Don't think about two fights ahead. You think about one fucking fight. The guy that you're going to fight, what's he going to bring to the table? How can I prepare? And how can I work so hard that it's impossible that he outworked me? And that's it. And the thing that, you know, I looked at, I'm going to say two things about till last night. One, how he looked backstage. I did not like his look, dude. You know, I did not like, it looked exactly like what I'm talking about. Like, it's like, and this, these are, if you guys watch a lot of my stuff, you've probably heard me kind of allude to this before. And so when I saw him backstage, he looked exactly, exactly like I'm describing a person whose belief system has been shattered and they're trying to find something like, you know, like, like I have to like, please God, let me just win this fight so that I can get on the right side of the, you know, like be moving in the right direction. That is not a good mindset, dude. Now he had a great performance. I mean, it was really bizarre at first and scary, but the second round, dude, man, if he would have won that fight, I would have, I would have thrown my computer through a wall. I would have thrown my fucking computer through a wall. Now, a lot of you guys know that uh, you can tell how emotionally invested I am in a fight based on how much I bet on the other guy, because that's what I do. Like if it, no matter who, like if it's someone that I really, really care if they win or lose, I bet on the other guy and I do that. And the size of that bet dictates how much I want the other guy to win because that's what I need to like dampen the emotional blow if they don't win. I bet 250 bucks on Dion, uh, uh, Duplis last night and I was hoping to lose, dude. And I won. I was hoping to lose. I mean, I, I, there was like during that second round, I, th- there was not even one second. There, actually, the whole fight, there wasn't even one second where I was like, oh, well, you know, hopefully he pulls this off and I'll take that money. I don't want that money, dude. I wanted, I wanted Till to win, you know? But in that second round, when he was coming back. Like, I'm serious, dude. If he would have knocked him out, I would have literally taken my computer and thrown it through a fucking wall. I would have thrown it through a fucking wall. I would have been so fired up. 
I said I said on the IRL group. If you guys haven't joined my uh, my IRL group, I was I was in there uh, chatting with uh, Johnny Walker was on last night too, uh, and I said in the IRL group. The links in the description, by the way, if you want to join and come talk to me today. Uh, I said in the IRL, I was like, if Darren Till wins this fight, I'm gonna fucking cry, dude. I'm gonna cry because he needed it and he wanted it so bad. In in a way in a in a in a way that was just desperation. And it was like the first round, he looked like he looked like Ronda Rousey against Amanda Nunes. That's that's the best way that I can describe it. He looked like in the first round, he looked like Amanda Nunes. I'm I'm sorry, uh, Ronda Rousey against Amanda Nunes. Like you know, where like you could just tell like something is broken inside this fighter, you know, like something broke. And in her case, she was undefeated. She thought she's better than everybody, whatever. And then she got fucking annihilated by Holly Holm and it broke her entire belief system. And then she ends up going against Amanda Nunes who just pieced her up. That's what it looked like in the first round. And then dude, he dug deep and looked incredible in the second round. I wanted him to knock him out so bad. So bad, dude. But uh, but here's the other thing I'm going to say. And I don't like saying this, but I'm going to say it. His lack of preparation and takedown defense is absolutely inexcusable at this point. I mean, it's like, I, 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 don't, I don't know what else to say, dude. You know, I sprawl better than that, dude. Like, I sprawl, actually, I sprawl much better than that. I mean, all I train is jujitsu, though. But like, I mean, come on, man. Come on. Like, the, if you're getting beat by getting taken down, why are you training with Hamzat if you're not going to be training how to properly defend a takedown? You know? Like, the, I, I was literally watching this, like, and, and at this point, uh, Gabrielle was kind of, like, half asleep. You know? Like, uh, we stayed up really late on Friday. And then Saturday, we were, like, uh, she was, like, kind of in and out. And I just kept saying, I'm like, are you fucking kidding me, dude? Every time he got taken down, I was like, come on, man. Because they weren't like, they weren't even like good shots. It was just like, like it, it looked like he hadn't trained takedowns. It's like, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. Like if your belief system is, is around destiny and it's not around grit, like the grit fighter is going to do, is going to train so heavily on takedown defense so that they can develop into someone who can defend. Look at Francis Ngannou. Look at Francis Ngannou. Tell me who's got more grit than that fucking guy, okay? Just think about his story of how he ended up in the United States. No one has more grit than him. And he goes, he loses to Stipe by getting taken down and exhausted and worn out, taken down, taken down, taken down. And people are like, oh, he has no wrestling now. It's like, oh, yeah? Oh, he has no wrestling? Did you watch the second fight? Because Stipe tried to take him down and he shook him off like he didn't even exist, you know? And then against Cyril Gaon, he won by wrestling. Now, Markel had told me how much he was, Markel actually and Eric, Eric Nixick was like, he's like, dude, he is, he is a savage on the ground now. He's like, no, but all his fights are so fast, no one's gotten to see it. Because he was on that streak where he just kept knocking everyone out in like, you know, like a minute. It was like Junior Dos Santos, that was the longest fight he had. And it was a minute 27. He locked out Rosen streak in like 15 seconds. He knocked out, uh, he knocked out Curtis Blades in like 30 seconds. So like he didn't, you know, he's training these skills, but you didn't get to see him. So, I mean, listen, like there, here's the thing. Like, okay, so like Kevin Holland, same kind of thing where it's like he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu, but in, in mixed martial arts, if you're not like Charles Oliveira level jiu-jitsu, then, and, and you're getting beat by guys taking you down, and you're really dangerous on your feet, then, then, you know, like just train not being taken down heavily. Right now, Kevin Holland got a pass against Hamzat because it's, it's, it's Hamzat, dude. You know what I mean? Like it's Hamzat. It doesn't matter how well you train. He's a complete and total fucking monster. He's going to be able to take down whoever. Cause he's, he's the best of the best. Right. But do please, I mean, Anyway, but again, I, I understand, dude, when your, your mindset's broken like that, you can't train new things because you're, it's like, uh, like, like, like training from a position of fear is not like it, it, it never, it's not going to work. And it's not, it's, and the thing is, it's out of your control. It's not like, like Darren could just like, know, 
oh, I'm, I'm, I'm like training desperate. I'm like fighting desperate and just like stop doing it. You know, you don't have control over it because your whole life is ahead. Of, like, it's like, you know, if I, it, you go from, if I win this fight, then blah, 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 to how old am I right now? I'm coming off a ser- a, you know, serious injuries. I've lost three of my last four or whatever. If I lose, I might be done. What the fuck am I going to do with the rest of my life? Like, what am I going to do? I'm a UFC fighter. It's all I know. I don't know how to do anything else. I have to win. And so you're paralyzed with fear because you're afraid you're going to lose everything. And your entire belief system has been shattered. How do you change your mindset? It's fucking hard. I don't like, I don't, I don't know if I'd be able to do it. The reason I can relate to this is because I think that's what I would be like. I think I would break under that, not break, but like I would, I would have a tremendous problem being confident when the, when the a negative outcome has repercussions, like your fucking life is over. You know what I mean? I mean, his life's not really over, but the life that you've known will be I mean, like all, I'm sure all he's ever wanted to be is a fucking UFC fighter. And he's like, Hey, if you lose this, you lose the only thing you've ever wanted. It's a heavy fucking thing to wear and then try to be training and thinking about takedown defense. And you know, fuck, I wish he would have won, man. I love that guy, dude. I really do. And I feel for him, dude. I said, like, uh, I said in the IRL group after the fight, I was like, this is probably the lowest moment in this guy's life right now, dude. You know, where you go in there that desperate, like you need, like you go in there that desperate and then you lose and you get injured. It's like, fuck, dude, the sport is so unforgiving, man. It's ruthless, but I'm rooting for, I love that guy, man. I, I don't know. I don't know. Like the only thing I can, I can recommend to him is someone needs to get in his ear and be like, it's not your, I mean, it is your skills. You have to fucking figure out how to not get taken down. But like, you have to change your mindset into a grit mindset. Train the skills. Your confidence isn't about destiny. It's not about what you're going to lose. It's not about what you're going to win. It's about grit. It's about the work that you put in. It's about the skills that you built. And you're confident that he couldn't have worked harder than you. It's not fucking possible. And what he's good at, you trained the antidote to that. Oh, he's good at takedowns? Well, I trained takedown defense with fucking Hamzat for six months. Fuck him. Fuck him. Try it, dude. You think you're better at takedowns than fucking Hamzat? I shake him off now. That's where it needs to come from. That destiny shit is is fairy dust. It's not real. It's not fucking real. You know? I don't even like saying that out loud because like I'm... I'm a firm believer in mindset equals outcomes. Like I am, you know, what I'm doing here, I like, I know where this is going. You know, I know what I'm doing and where it's going, but me going into the octa, I can't get, someone can't not, you know, can't punch me in the face and then derail what I'm doing. You know, that's the thing about the fight game. It's crazy. Like, like what I'm doing is like, okay, I have momentum now. I know where this is going. This is good. I mean, like this is going to be a very big brand you know, well expanded outside of MMA. That's always been my plan. And now I could say definitively that is where this is going. But in the fight game, you can have the same kind of feeling and then you get punched in the face and someone just takes it from you. The stakes in this game are fucking bananas, dude. It's why it's such an amazing sport, but it's so heart wrenching to watch sometimes because the, because again, like the stakes are so high, people are going to lose. Someone always loses, dude. I love this fucking sport, man. And I love Darren Till and I'm, I feel for him. Anyway, that's what I got.